Hi, I'm Tealish, and you're watching Coffee and Clicks. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe and click on the link tree found in the description of this video for links to my media content. Enjoy, and don't forget, wake up and smell the clicks. Hi, I'm Tealish, and you're watching Coffee and Clicks. Um, today's episode, uh, in today's episode, I have the pleasure of talking with Saul Elizondo. Is that, am I pronouncing that right? Saul? It's fine. So, like, Saul Goodman of Breaking Bad. Okay, okay. Better call okay. Saul, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Saul Elizondo, the newly crowned Heroclix world champion. Um, congratulations, Saul, and welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. I really enjoy to uh, talk and uh, get uh, to the people more information about this game. So I'm very glad to be here. Yeah, and um, I just want to start by asking you, so I mean, you, um, how many people were in the World Championship? In So it was the World Championship, for those people who don't know, was held in, this is the 2022 Heroclix World Championship. It was held in Memphis, Tennessee um, a couple of weekends ago now. Um, and uh, Saul was the winner of the singles event. He was the, he's the reigning world champion. Um, I, how, do you know how many people were in the event? I believe it was... I'm not sure if were 169 or 171. But right. were more or less that uh, amount of... of uh, players on, on the main event. Yeah, it was somewhere up above, like uh, it was. Uh, it was definitely one sixty or more. There were a lot of there were a lot of people uh, in the event. Um, it was three hundred points modern. Um, play your best stuff, and uh, um, I just want to ask you, like, what team did you play, and like, how did your team work? Okay, the team that I played were like a Swiss Army. Everybody thought that we're Scarlet Witch, but it was a Swiss Army. Um, most of the members of my team uh, of, of Toxic Clicks come from playing TCG games. So we had a mindset of making some uh, use of the sideline as a big advantage. If you can use your sideline to be very active or get the stuff of your side, like whatever you want, is a big advantage against all the different matchups that you can have. So I I came from playing Thanos a lot of time before playing this team. As soon as Thanos came, I really loved him. And I enjoyed to play with him. But I was a little tired of, of playing Thanos. I thought that everybody will be prepared for that team and start building a team that were like a Swiss army with answers to anything that could came up. It was the first thing that we start thinking before building this team. Uh, the, the main point were to be with uh, little, um, I don't know how to say it, like little engines that could work as separate and in with with uh, with a good synergy to make big plays and good tempo on the game, so you can get very good advantage as soon as possible. So the first time, the the first point were okay. What piece is the the best piece that you had to play? Scarlet Witch. 
Because what? Because we had the combo that with two actions, we put the Scarlet Witch on the... We, we can freeze the, the first straight line of the opponent, so it will be very, very tough for them to get along ab about that. It was the first point. The second point, what could you use to get uh, a good hitter, a good alpha striker that can get the, the, the points that you need to get to capitalize the advantage taken from the Scarlet Witch. So we put the the Sakaran Iron Man. Then we need for the combo a TK, the Venom Mag, and for the for the combo we needed the Marbella. So with the side step and putting in the net square the Venom Mag, and with the purpose to range, we can get to the square that we needed. The next point that we needed was the angler. So how do we get to the angler and start switching and get advantage? Okay, we use matching jaspers. In this in this point, you had to uh, define which of the two prime slots you you have to use. The 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 best two options that you had were destroyer or matching jaspers. We know that some people use Wizard or some primes that uh, make good synergy with some specific things like scientists. But in the case of, of this point where you were playing like a team or non-team that didn't use one of those primes, you had to use or Destroyer or Matching Jaspers. In this case, we choose Matching Jasper because it's a very good piece. You get access to Emotional Modifier to to have an answer uh, against Thanos, even if you don't have it on your main force, you get it from the sideline, and it's very uh, like comfortable to to play against Thanos when you have an answer to that. So with that main specific uh, strategy, we just put some pieces like the swapping strategy with the. Xavier and the and the magic with the with the sword. The first version that we had were with the with Kate Pride and the token, but I realized that I needed the points of the bearer of the sword because it helps you a lot when you needed the emotional modifier or some equipment to to get along uh, with all the team. So I decided to try this for the advice of Oscar, uh, one of the members of the team that is the main master of the team. And he also made top cut. We face each other at top 16 and I have the luck to beat him. Uh, but the last piece that I think was the MVP of this, uh, of this team was Felix Faust because the synergy with tarot cards were amazing. We, we review most of tarot deck lists in which I think 50 to 80% use it at least, page of ones and high prices. So if you make statistics uh, in most of time, you will have at least 66 to 70% some advantage with the tarot card that make improvement to Felix Faust. And it was very nice and it showed a lot in, in the tournament. Uh, coming back to, to the X-Men swaps, we had four options in the in the swapping form. The if you if you lose that we knew that it will happen a lot of times and it's it's not Thanos, we swap the Bear of the Sword and the Xavier to putting the Up Summers, that's a very good support, could be a third attacker and makes a lot of uh, tricks, interesting tricks because she can copy Perplex and Prob of the Scarlet Witch with the, with the Darkhold or some power that anybody could use. So. 
it was very helpful. The other one was Venom 9. If you play against Thanos, no matter what, you put the Deadpool dock, the Deadpool that put the square, yeah. the square terrains of, of water, and and with Venom Mag because you need a transport and decay, a free decay to make all the combos. And the last piece that was if you win map or if you play against X Men or somebody that is having the Jubilee, you put Jubilee because it's very strong piece. And if you can have access to her with swapping, it's amazing. Uh, the last point that we had is okay. Maybe we're taking fourth spot of the sideline with the swaps of the X Men. You not you you're not needing anything else, but you only have five spots for the for the equipments. The first one was the motion modifier because if you're playing against Thanos, you have to be prepared against that guy, and the motion modifier is a must. The second was the the cape of the, the clock of levitation that you put to secure an Iron Man so you can equip him with two objects on the first turn with sidestep and moving. So you get a full charge secure an Iron Man for your second round if you go first or you, if you lose, you can have at least protection if they go against him for not getting killed the secure an Iron Man. If they didn't get to secure an Iron Man, you can make a swing and make some points in, in the second turn. And here there's only three spots left. The first spot were the angler. So you can make the combo with the Scarlet Witch to get all the map and put the rune. And the other two were very baited. The first one was uh, the Scarlet Symbiote that gives you the plasticity to make some synergy with the tarot card of Seven of Pentacles to move free, to put it to Venom Mag or, or to put it to, to Felix Faust that were amazing. It worked amazing with that two pieces. And the last one were uh, very weighted also too because they told me that you use the Silver Surfer part. I didn't like it. I tried it in a lot of, of times. It came with the second action token, and if you didn't get the willpower of Security Ironman, you are you're almost done for the third turn. So I decided to not use a 10-point equipment. And I knew that in some cases you could you could use some sidestep with the Security Ironman, make the switch to to the clay. Of the of the puppet master, and have a an opportunity to get with a team with a lot of barriers at least get one piece out and make some big play with that. So it came with Daniel Powell in my last round, and the the clay was amazing. I really like it. I only I think I only used it once or maybe two times, but it was the the whole team. In the swords, I only used three. Barbedon, that is the one that make uh, splash damage when you use Blades Close Fangs. The Muramasa Blade, that is very good against uh, big temples or difficult pieces to kill. And the other one were the one of the stop click that, that never came out. So it was the, old, the whole team. So, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. Like, there were, a, there's a lot that goes into that team, and it was non theme. Um, a, a couple of questions. So when you, when you said there was a tarot card that goes really well with Felix Faust, um, what tarot card was it? What does it do? There are two and are in most of the decks of all the people. The first one there is the one that you want to be on the table is page of ones. The one that gives you when you throw a single dice, one more to results. Remember that Felix Faust with four, five and six, Negates the effects of Outwit, Prof, and Perplex oh. in range of eight. So if you get uh, Felix Faust uh, for the combo that you were carrying with Secure and Iron Man or with, um, with the Jubilee, you will get 
some attempts being not prof or not admitted because they will get a punishment for doing that. A lot of people thought that mm, I'm not sure to make prof, I'm not sure to use Adwit because it was page once or it was the high praise test. And Felix Faust will will have 66% of chances to cancel your uh, your ability, your output proper or perplex, yeah. and also will have 33 percentage of, of probability to get you punished to get a uh, six. To take and, a damage, to take a damage. Yeah. yeah. And if that card or high priestess were on the map, you won't be uh, very concerned about getting a one. That is the one that gives you another extra reaction of that. So I was very comfortable playing Faust because he was very, very happy to be near of the of the opponent, and also the other the one that were very amazing were Ace of Cups. I think it's Ace of Cups, the one that gives you plus one to super senses. Yeah, the, and the uh, the other one gives you plus one to super senses technically too. So, yeah. And most of the people had that uh, all all that cards. And if you review it, maybe you have between 65, 66% of uh, probability to get one card that will be very useful to the team. So, Felix Faust were amazing, the MVP. I, I had another question also. So, um, how does the combo with Angler work with Scarlet Witch and with Angler? How do you get her all the way across the map? Okay. In uh, the, this combo works. If you get a map of four per four, the one that gets you in the fourth line, mm -hmm. not in the second, is easier. You get all the map, no problem. You can cover all the map. But if you are in a scenario where where you have to get a, a regular standard area, you have to do this. The first step is you have to put uh, Ben of Mac, you, you, have, you, you need one perplex, Ben of Mac, Marbella, and the Scarlet Witch. And the perplex normally is the, the Magic Jaspers. You need also Magic Jaspers. The first step is swapping the, the Darkhold for the Angler. The Angler, when you are, are on, on adjacent to an object, or a wall, you can place the character six squares away, like a TK, but you have to be adjacent to an object or, uh, or a wall. It depends on the map. If the map doesn't get very, uh, very comfortable to you because you don't have walls or you don't have blocking terrain or anything that could be useful, or the opponent doesn't play objects, you have to use the objects of the Sakarian Arrowman to get more possibilities to get to the other side. They come with like this. You use Perplex to the Venom Mac to the range. You need to make it to the range to make it into actions. We practice a lot in, in, in the previous format before X of Swords, we could make it in, in three actions. But with the upcoming of the Magic Jaspers and the Angler, you can do it in two actions. The first step, perplex to get on that range. Uh, swapping the Angler for the Garfell. You're making power TK to Scarlet Witch, six words away. Then sidestep with the, with the Marbella to carry the, the Venom Mag and exactly Venom Mac reaches the square that puts the Scarlet Witch on the next six squares. Then you only use the Angler to put the Scarlet Witch on next six squares, and you are covering the first line of the opponent. So with that combo in two actions, you can run the opponent, and you can use the power action of Magic Jaspers the a current Ironman, then you can use sidestep 
and move action, get in the start line and not moving the second Ironman and get fully charged the second Ironman with two objects. Wow. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and so, um, yeah, that, that's, uh, so how did you figure all of this out? Like, it came with, we tried this combo before the, the, the coming of X of Swords because we saw a lot of links that were using Scarlet Witch and were freezing the opponent, but they take four actions. So with the scientist build that I think PJ Bowling made, a lot of people were trying to make some fixes and some stuff, putting the uh, the Doom of Four Arms, the one that only gives you three actions, I think is Doom, mm -hmm. the one of only gives you three actions. So we tried to figure out how to freeze the opponent with only three actions. And we were working on that combo since, since there. Uh, Oscar figured out how to put the next step to the combo uh, by giving the perfects to a range because we were making a lot of iterations, a lot of night making iterations in how you could get to the other side with only two or three actions. When we figured out that we could do in two, it were amazing. It gives you an improvement to a team that nobody figured out that, okay, how could he could get run me and also give full charge to Sakarin Ironman and a little positioning positioning with the team that could make a swing to all the map. It make a lot of aggressive plays and have the opportunity if you lose map to get very covered of Thanos or some other teams. Uh, and so what happens if like, cause you were non theme. So what happens if they put you on a map? Like what was the one map that you did not want to go to? Uh, I think there, there weren't any map that I didn't like because most of players played one map very open or very close. If they use one very close, you mm -hmm. can take advantage of all the walls and blocking terrains and run them with the Scarlet Witch. And you can make hypersonic speed or sidestep hypersonic or TK sidestep charge glory with second arm and charging maybe Marbella and make 10 damage. So I, I didn't care about the map. I, I only play really one map when I won, and it was the one of other world uh, of the castle that was that, that was one that I was practicing with Jubilee because I didn't want to travel with the big map, the 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 one of uh, the game in the in the start because it's very heavy and complicated, and I decided ah okay I will try with that negative zone that is one that is very close, and a lot of people will play with that because of Destroyer. Okay, I have to play with that. And I have practiced the comments to how to get to the other side because it has a lot of walls. And the last one was the Sword Wedding, that it was very open. And I think the one of the most open maps that is currently available in the in the modern format. Is which one? The... Uh... Desert Wedding. Desert Wedding. Oh, the Desert Wedding, yeah. Yeah, for sure. The one of three maps. I only... Use one map in all the tournament because when I lose, okay, use your map. Yeah, you but want Jubilee. Yeah, you want Jubilee. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what were your toughest matchups? My in, in the tournament, the most heavy matchups were two. The first one that I knew that would be very complicated was was the one with Oscar, because he knew how to beat my team. He knew what will I exactly will do. So I was very, very concerned about that. That's your teammate, right? Yeah, my teammate. We get yeah. uh, in top 16. And I was very concerned about that matchup. In, uh, the luck came up with uh, Thanos throwing. He was playing Thanos. I play against one exactly, uh, exactly one team building like him. So when I saw that team, ah, okay, no problem. I know exactly what he can do, what he cannot do. So I know exactly what to do, and it was fine. Uh, but when I play against Oscar, it was very tough 
he could kill my Scarlet Witch, but Thanos were very damaged and he only threw one, one, one with the gems. So it was a luck in that, in that time, but I was very terrified playing against him because I think he's the greatest player in Mexico. So, and one of the at least top 20 of the world. So I was very stressed about playing in him. Okay. Also, Daniel Pablo was, was very tough because he kicked me out the previous worlds, and I respect a lot. I love him, and I could win. I could win, but I was a little stressed. It was not as hard as I thought because I could make the combo and make some stuff, and with the clay, the picks of the clay that I could use, I yeah. killed the. Uh, the molecule men and I get more comfortable playing and we were both on also on top because we were five zero so I, I didn't care if I lose or I win because I was on top already mm -hmm. and Daniel I, I think he was playing like okay we're a fun play smooth and I get more comfortable and the last match that I, that I think is it was a top it was against Isaac because he's the great, the greatest player of all time, and I really enjoyed that game a lot. It was very, very intense. Yes, um, that's and um, and what did he play? So what what did Oscar play and what did Isaac play? Oscar played uh, Thanos with uh, Matching Jasper with uh, Molecule Man. The Stars of Fire and Collector. It was a team team of standards plus five. And, and he had the option to, to get a little or a few points of your team and get covered with a lot of barrier. So I was very concerned about that team. And Isaac was a X Men swap team, very aggressive swap team, where you are facing against. A swap of Cape Pride and Xavier, and the Deadpool of the Cake, who gives uh, all the pieces, the tokens, and another Xavier, and put you a team of, in my case, he put Double Maggot, uh, the Venom Wolverine, but he had access to the Beast, the, the Doctor Strange Beast, the one who. Uh, gets the cosmic uh, guys that you can out with the the cosmic guys mm -hmm. because we're, we're the venom wolverine double man uh jubilee he used uh hop summers and i think this is one ah the the guy the multiple man we're plus six or plus, plus seven, I think. And he Very won mass. Did he, he won map? Yeah, he won map. He won map. Yeah. Uh, um, so... All the map and you didn't win any... Did you win map at all in the tournament or...? Uh, I, I won in my... I, I get the first round by for the points of block or... I don't remember of which tournament, but they saved all the points. I get the first round with buy. The second one, I won map, and I was very comfortable because I could make the the combo. And the other guy didn't know what happened, and I was okay. When I killed the Sky Tyrant, I was okay, I'm fine. I could get all over the, the team without any risk. Uh, I lose map with the other one. I lose map. I won map against uh, and that have the... Had the, the the same exactly team as Oscar that were on my fifth round. Uh, were against Ant, very good player, ex champion of Yu-Gi-Oh. Nice guy. I really love to play against him. Uh, I won that ball. I won against in my in top thirty-two. I lost map on top sixteen. I lost map on top eight. I won map. Uh, on top four, I won map, and in the in the, in the final, I lost map. Okay, I won four times. 
That's that's actually pretty good. That's you know that's um with the new rules change with um only plus three. It is pretty. Po it's pr it's possible to win map at even at, with awesome. non theme. So it, it I I feel like it makes it more enticing to play non theme, right? Like you're not so worried about it, you know. No, but you have to to get to plan props. for it. Yeah, you have to to get printed props. It's very important when you're not playing team. If you're not playing props, it's very complicated to get a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, right, the uh, Thanos field. You didn't have prop. Well, well, only one prop that was with the commissioner token, the the one of the of the rookie. But only one prop. I didn't like it. And I make some iterations, and I didn't like to. Who was your prop? So it was Faust, and who else was your prop? I have Felix Faust and the option with the Scarlet Witch when I made the combo. Oh, with Dark Bolt. Fans, I made the swap of the Angler because maybe you will need it again. Yeah. And putting the the matching Jaspers on the square of he can see the the Scarlet Witch will be very easy with Venom Mag and the Seven of Pentacles that can carry everyone and Pretty K. It was very easy. Um, so, uh, also, I mean, you mentioned Thanos, yeah, somebody was playing Thanos or Thanos, um, I th think it's pronounced Thanos, so, <laughs> um, I don't Thanos, I play against... did you, yeah, what, what, what figures did you see the most of? I think the most played figures were to match in Jaspers and Destroyer, mm -hmm. but if we're not telling about them, uh, this, or, yeah, not Primus, I think the most played figure were Molecule Man. Because I face against at least four Molecule Mans. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see that. I mean, in my opinion, Molecule Man is still probably the, like, one of the best figures. Like, I don't know if it's the best figure, but, like, <laughs> it's... We were debating. My brother, Oscar, and me were debating about... Playing Felix Faust or Molecule Man? Oscar told us, no, you have to play Molecule Man. My brother told us and showed us how uh, or ter uh, ter uh, terrible and scarier could be Felix Faust. Felix Faust is always a problem. If, he, if it has the name of Felix Faust, it will be a very <laughs> scary piece. Well, for so I, for, I think for your team, I think Felix Faust definitely works better. It worked better. It gave me prop. I really needed prop. Mm -hmm. The enhancements were amazing. Mm -hmm. And that outwit come a lot of times. In the final, he made the outwit that I needed to kill the, uh, the Venom Wolverine. Yeah. And I, I feel comfortable with th that option. I would prop, remove. He could make an attack. And all that bothering stuff of throwing the the the, the die roll when the other one would want to use perplex proper it is it was amazing. Now you also mentioned tarot cards and uh, how they helped you, but were there any time that tarot cards hurt you? Like that the people played against people played tarot cards and they they worked against you. I I think in in, in in my case all the tarot cards helped me. All the tarot cards helped me. When I had the chance to be hurt by a tarot card that were with the the Thanos matchups mm -hmm. were with the pool. I think Daniel Powell didn't keep the pool or came very early. With Oscar were the first card the pool and with Anne that were the another Thanos was the first card. When I played against Flashes they get the one of the incapacitate on the first turn. So could, they couldn't make the combo of getting the the, the lasso and incapacitate and all the stuff because they have missed the chance. Uh, most of them, as, as we know, my, my third deck was uh, Seven of Pentacles, the one that gives you, when you have plasticity, you can move uh, half speed free. Uh, it's a uh, Cubs, the Super Sense plus one. Bishop one plus one to any single die roll. The high priestess as my as my other uh, of the arcana. 
that were the one that you can make a roll of, of a single die. No matter if, uh, is, is, if it is uh, just two, two die roll. Uh, and the last one were the one of, if you mix telekinesis, you can get up a token. With Venom Mac, make very powerful synergy because in a lot of times, you get the double token of Venom Mag and very, very complicated. When that card came out, you know, I, I, I said like, yes, I can make a big play because free decay, move a piece, okay? I can run out and move the team and make another option. So it was very helpful. All the drug cards, and I think a lot of teams play the same card. So that, that, were, that was a key uh, to make the accomplishment of, of winning because the tarot cards of my opponent were useful to me most of the time. Ah, I, I have one one nice point. When I was practicing, I had instead of Ace of Cups, the the Queen of Cups, the one that makes the damage maximum two. But I lost every single game that that lady came out, and I said, no, I won't play that card. And I put the Ace of Cups, and it makes wonderful the 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 synergy with the team. So, so what was your total record on the on the night? Like, I didn't lost. You didn't lose one single game. No. No. I, not, I, even, I, not even in Swiss or no. 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 X zero. Wow. I get. <laughs> we, we we I think the six zero were Isaac in first place. I was in second place. Jason Albi that I played him against very nice guy, mm -hmm. the one of Triple Apoc, uh yeah. was in third place. And the other lady that were, I, I, I think she was the Canadian. Uh, uh, Emily. Yep. Emily. Very nice girl. I really love and enjoy to chat with, with her. Very, very nice person. And she was the uh, fourth spot on six year old. And I came all the, all the top, uh, undefeated. Also, Isaac were undefeated, and we played on the finals. And so, I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, congratulations again on uh, winning. Uh, it was um, must have been a long day. I know, I know, for me, when we, when I we, when we played in Team Worlds, that was a really long day. It was like ten hours of like hero clicks nonstop. <laughs> hey, congratulations to, to you and your team for the for the Team Worlds. You you had a tough day because it was a lot of rounds. And then top cut, we yeah. were um, like, oh, we're screwed up. We need to rest. Yeah. Um. And yeah, thank you. And so, uh, I mean, basically, what was your what was your overall experience like in in Memphis in uh, in the with the World Championship? Like, like, how would you describe your overall experience? I think the the people were very nice, very. Uh, Fair play in all, all the people. Uh, I, I think most of the people were very uh, nice and cool, and you can get good time with everybody. The only thing that I think that could be better for next year was the uh, logistic about the, the special figures, mm -hmm. because a lot of people could couldn't get what they wanted. The, 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 you mean the for the pop up the pop up store with that were selling the LEs, like the, yeah. the convention exclusives? Yeah, because uh, the Warp World Phoenix were uh, out of stock very very early. Also, the Wonder Woman of the Chainsaw, and a lot of people thought, "Oh, I was playing, I couldn't get one," but. The hotel were very nice, very comfortable. The the space were very big. Uh, the people were nice. I really had a nice experience. The the, the last two worlds that I have been, I have only been in two worlds, but this one was very nice. The only thing that I could fix, if I could fix, fix would be the. The logistic of the store is the only thing that I 
there are some complaints and, and that's it. Ah, and one other thing the, that we played the top three two in the same night that we were, everybody was like, ah, we're destroyed. We need to rest. No, 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 no. You have to play one more round. But uh, I'm used. Uh, I came from playing TCGs. Yeah. And yeah. you played like almost 15 or in sometimes 16 hours and is very uh, mental and physical resistance. So if you want to play competitive, you have to get prepared to that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, really I'm, I mean, it's time. taxing, it's taxing, but it like physically and mentally, it's kind of taxing, but it's also you're having fun. So, you know, you're having fun and you're competing. So that's just like par for the course. I. I, I think it's the, the only two things that could have some improvement, but I knew a lot of nice people. The guys from Dial H were so amazing. I really love to to get with them. Uh, all the staff people greet us very well. No problem that we were Mexicans and we, we speak Spanish and everybody was so nice. I, I really enjoyed the, the event so much. My my brother and my sister in law get engaged in the event, and everybody congratulate. And yes, congratulations, uh, Richie, right? Yeah, Richie. And so and did Valeria. he did he propose at the event or? Uh, they they went to a, a garden that is very beautiful, like uh, 15, 20 minutes from the Graceland uh, space. And he was running out because he proposed her uh, the day of the of the team worlds, and Oscar and me couldn't get in because he wasn't there. And hey, come on, you have proposed her. Come on, we have to play. And it was very intense, a lot of adrenaline, and we were very we were very between happy and stressed, and it was very fun and. Wonderful travel to Memphis. Yeah. No, congratulations to him. Thank. I mean, that's that's wonderful. Um, so, uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's really great. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask you too is about the fan appreciation event. Did you stay for that? Did you watch the fan I, appreciation event? I was playing Battle Royale, but I, but I I heard about all the stuff and all the changes that uh, are coming up, and I was. Uh, at the first time, impressed a lot. Okay, we will get terrain markers where you can have elevations and the equipment will be uh, attached to the to the character so you don't lose prep time. I think all that changes are interesting and good for the game. I'm thinking that they have already game tested and it, can, it had to came good, so they they made this change. I think it would be better for new players because it's complicated to use your action pool wisely if you're not used to play with equipment and with prep time and mm -hmm. to think a lot of plays to the future. But if you are already equipped, I think that will increase the opportunity to learn quicker for the new players. I think all these changes are for new players. And I'm glad that they are making things less complex. Okay, they are making uh, things less complex, but they put in tarot cards that make another yeah. iteration of complications. Well, now but they're adding they're adding knockback damage back. Do you like, I that? like that? I love that. I, like I mean, it. I love that. I think everybody wanted knockback damage. Like, <laughs> I think it, it, it's good for the game. I think it's good to defeat some pieces that are very complicated to to get all uh, to get rid of them. And maybe the the point that you, I, I think, Jack, that, that right now. No, no one's get protected for knockback, right? Everybody is affected. Super strength, cover flexes, charge. Everybody could be knocked back, right? 
Um, yeah, everybody could be knocked back. Yep. And it's all oh. it's exactly three squares. And um, now they're just now they're bringing back the knockback damage, which I, I think I guess makes things like super strength better and things like that. Like, right? Yeah, and doubles. And if you you make doubles of grief, make some good plays and make more get more spice to the game because mm -hmm. it make it more interesting and you can uh, make some capitalization of, of pieces like uh, the common storm of picks of swords oh she's gonna be so good now yeah <laughs> everybody thought that it was right it, it doesn't work right now okay it's mm, perfect yeah it's for better <laughs> <laughs> okay, she has stealth, cover reflexes, knock back as free. Maybe she can make a pin damage to some pieces. Nice. I think it's a good, good change. Um, I I also uh, forgot to ask you. So you, I mean, you mentioned that that um, you know, your brother uh got married or got uh, not got married, but got engaged. Your brother got engaged. Um, so you you're from Mexico, um, and uh, and uh, you're actually actually the first I think you're the first world champion that's um, from another country that has become the world champion. Um, but uh, what is the scene like in Mexico for Heroclix? Okay, I think it's very centralized in Mexico City. We live in the north part of of Mexico. We live in Monterrey, me and my team. Monterrey is like two hours from Texas. We go a lot of time, like, uh, I think one time every two months we go going shopping and to visit family because Texas and, and Nuevo Leon are like the same state. All the people uh, have family in Nuevo Leon, that is my state. And uh, there's a lot of traffic uh, or people traveling from all that um, parts. But here in Monterey, the community, a lot of a lot of years, like five or six years ago, we had a huge community, like mm -hmm. three persons playing. That for here it's a huge community in a, in a city that were consistent and were playing in the events and the leagues and all the stuff. But it started to get strained because the stores disappeared. They didn't want to buy more Heroclix product. And we play at my home. It's no joke. We play at my home. I received all the people at my home. So your home was like, the like kind of became like the store, the venue that everybody played at? Yeah, we put the tables and buy stuff from other stores. And we play the leagues. And we have fun or practice like in, in my home. In Mexico City, there are a lot of stores. Yeah. A, a, a big one that is Master Corps that held the, the main event of the Nationals here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. They are a good friend of us. Uh, they have, I think, the biggest community in all the country. Also, there is another two states that are, are big with the community. One is Guadalajara, that is, uh, they have, I think, like 20 people that are consistent playing. And the other one is Leon. Leon had the actual uh, national Mexican champion. Shout out to Eddie Orozco. That is our, our current Mexican champion. And he's from that city. And to those players, what uh, what was his, Jesse Orozco was his name? Jesse Orozco or? Eddie, 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 Eddie like Edward. Eddie Orozco. Eddie Orozco. Eddie Orozco. Does, does he and like do other players from the from your from your from Mexico, do they uh, travel to the United States to play in large tournaments like Worlds and Nationals very often? Unfortunately, uh, Eddie didn't have the visa, so he couldn't travel. He wanted to travel. For from Mexico, came with uh, one guy from other state that come from Aguascalientes. That is Jerry. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry is a very uh, love it and known player in Mexico. Uh, he won the 400 uh, tournament at Worlds. He gets, he gets a, a nice 
uh, prices. I think he get all the dark cards and all and our stuff. He went from Mexico with us. It was Abraham, the team from Guadalajara. Uh, the the guy who was with the with Richard, that is the one with the uh, Mexican fighting masks. Oh, uh, okay. From Mexico. I think I saw a picture of that in the uh, in one of the pictures that people took. Uh, Abraham have came to to the world. I think that he have been going since 10 years ago, since they started. Okay. So I think he's one of the most uh, uh, consistent uh, Mexican player that, that is going to Worlds. Uh, Dionisio Velasco also. Nico, and your, your friend Oscar, is he from Monterrey or? Yeah, he's from Monterrey. Well, he's from Durango, another state, but he lives uh, from more than 10 years here in Monterey. He's like adopted here in this state. Okay. <laughs> and so um, how did you guys get your name from? So what is your team name? What is it? I see you have the jersey on. Um, ah, it, Toxic Links. Toxic it Links. Has funny, it has a funny story because we we make friends with Oscar, with Chuy, Abdiel, my brother and me. We all five. The other teammate is Valeria that is our head head coach and is the the general manager of the team. Uh, but the players, we all five, uh, came with the mindset that okay, we have to play with the with the most powerful pieces and the best combos and okay, we have to play competitively. And all the people say, ah, oh, no, you're toxic because you don't play fun. And hey, we're not toxic for playing competitively. We're mm -hmm. only um, meta players and we like to win. You can also do that. No, we don't like it. And they told us, the one part of the community told us that, hey, you're toxic. And that's why it was kind of joke that we were, ah, oh, toxic, toxic. Let's call us the Toxic Leaks. Hey, it, it seems funny. And we start to call our team like the Toxic Leaks. And one friend of Oscar came with the design and we love that one rocket raccoon with the gas mask, like with all the stuff of, of the Toxic and Radioactive. And we love the the logo. So we, okay, we, we will stay with the logo and team. And we're friends competing and enjoying the game. That's so funny. So, um, so basically, you are you're all the um, the anti fun clicks group. We have fun. <laughs> no, I know you. I know you really have fun. I'm just kidding. Like, yeah, because hey. you're toxic. You're toxic. So. No, no. But when they tell you're us, against okay, fun. Let's play pauper. Okay, we will play pauper, but meta pauper. Meta pauper. Like, oh, okay. No, you're toxic. <laughs> we were like, oh. but it, it was funny because. The, the community start to, to see like, okay, we won't change their mindset, but uh, everybody has the opportunity to play fun or, or play sealed or play any kind of events. One of the lovely things of, of this game is that you can play a lot of format, formats that is fair for everyone. You can get com competitively and play 300 modern that is a more uh, advanced uh, game line. You can play silver if you're nostalgic or or, pl or play bronze or any kind of vintage style golden with all the forbidden pieces like uh, orange battery and Ophidian and Felix Faust and you can do all freaking combos. But if you want to play something less complicated, you can play pulper or shield or or draft that I think is very complicated, but it's very funny. But it's something for everyone. So I, I think that is the magic of this game. Yes. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, there there is something for everyone in this game, which is you know what makes it great. One of the thing, one of the things that makes it great. Um, are you are you a fan of the comic books or anything? Like, um, I mean, how did you get into Heroclix in the first place? Ah, my first, uh, my, my first, I, the 
first time I get New York to Heroclix were like when the pieces, the first, uh, the first Kingdom Come came out, that everybody played one Kingdom Come with a lot of uh, support pieces like the Destinies and the Con Artists and uh, Cheap Outwits and Perplex and Props. I, I think was the first approach to the game. But well, didn't, didn't play, only watch it, and ah, it's nice. My second approach were like funny, like when Metron, Super War Metron came out, and you had some pieces that that were with the white powers, but I, I played only fun, and okay, it's fine, my brother liked it, I could play a little, but the first time I get to the game, in a more competitive way, I think was in the coming of World Finest. Between Shield and the coming of the of the ID cards and World Finest were my were my first approach to to the game. And I start to play it more seriously. And with my my first top cut to original was a top four when the crank combo with Justin Justin Saber Justin Saber the one who moved the oh robots. Justin Justin Seifert yeah yeah he he moves the robots yeah with Nimrod right he would move Nimrod yeah. around yeah with him and the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh crank the one that gets uh oh to, okay the crank yeah mm -hmm. yeah I played that that combo and get to Top four and I start to play more co uh, consistently. Since there, I get a break uh, break period when I moved to another city. And when I came back to Monterey, uh, I start to play competitively like for the last four years. So it's uh, the time that I'm being more consistent playing. Okay. Uh, and you, you, asked, you asked me if I was a comic fan. Yeah, are you? Are you? Yeah, I like it. I watch the comics on video comics on YouTube, and sometimes I watch it uh, on the on the iPad or on internet. I really love the the stories of, of that are coming about X Men. And I love the stories of Deadpool that are very funny. Harley Quinn, I really love that they get her to the to the comic line because she came from the nineteen uh, series, mm -hmm. and I really love Harley Quinn. It's my favorite character. So uh, I think they are, they, are, they are the most comic that I've read. I'm reading. I also read some manga and when Invincible, uh, Walking Dead, and. When there's a novel, graphic novel comes and it's interesting, I I, I really like to, to read it. Nice, yeah. I mean, I uh, I th think a lot of people out there, um, you know, look at some of those other intellectual properties, like from manga or from like uh, Walking Dead or you know various TV shows and movies, and, and they want to turn those into clicks, right? <laughs> Yeah, what they they do with uh, Yugi Clicks, I really love the Yugi Clicks. I had my Millennium Stone with all the items, and it's very nostalgic because I was uh, a player of Yu-Gi-Oh for almost, I think, almost 20 years playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, okay. A lot of years Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I never played Yu-Gi-Oh. I used to play Magic, but I, I never played, played Yu-Gi-Oh. I played Magic uh, and D&D when I grew up. <laughs> Magic is nice, but it's a complicated community. I think it's more uh, fair play and more nice people at Heroclix. But in Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh! and some uh, TCGs, a lot of people want to win no matter what. And I don't like that. It's fine for some people, but i rather play with people that are not taking advantage of some misplay to make you get disqualified or get a warning or a game loss. So uh, I feel more comfortable on, on this game 
Um, all the people are very nice. Well, more or most of the people are very nice. Well, I mean, you are the now the reigning world champion. Uh, congratulations once again on uh, being the reigning 2022 Heroclix uh, world champion. Um, uh, as of as of two weeks ago. And um, do you have any final thoughts, Saul? Ah, my last thoughts are you have to make the, the jump and try to go to Worlds, have the experience, try to play out of the box, try new strategies, try to break the meta, try to play with things that you haven't tried yet, practice a lot, make a lot of iterations. And the most important thing, enjoy the game. This is for fun, not for being stressed, not for being, uh, uh, I can say bad words at this podcast. <laughs> sure, go for it. <laughs> okay. don't, 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 don't be a... Uh... Okay, yeah, don't, don't, okay. Be, one of the, don't be one don't of those. Be sure. don't, don't be the kind of people you, you rather be uh, nice people. And the most important thing i will make a reference to, to a, a friend a Juki friend that came with a, a thought a lot of years ago that what is most important what is the most important thing and i will ask you this question Anthony. what is the most important thing the friendship or the game oh, there you go yeah it's the friendship for sure yeah 100 percent. no you're wrong no, the, most <laughs> the game, because we know each other and we're friends. We're friends for the game. So the most, the most important thing is the game because we know by the game, we have to get the game as a game and keep the friendship. Oh, you have to so keep the game. Really... You have to keep the game intact, right? So that yeah. the, you don't ruin the game by Being clashing. Yeah. Nah, don't be a jerk. Okay. We have to get very grateful to the game because we know these nice people for the game. And that is the nicest thing and it's the greatest thing of Heroflix. You know people from all the world, you know people from all kinds of occupations and experience, uh, nice people as uh, Daniel Powell, uh, as Isaac, as Jason, uh, uh, color of Dial Age, and all the stuff of uh, all the guys of Dial Age, uh, you, Anthony, uh, uh, I have a lot of shout out that I could say most of the people of the event, uh, uh, Scott D'Agostino, all the stuff, people were very nice to us. And we make friends and we have, we celebrate the Mexican Independence Day when we came. And other people were very nice. Brad of the Brackett Show were very nice people, not knowing us. Just, uh, ah, hey, how, how are you doing? Gave us pizza, gave us drinks. We love that guy. I think this is the most amazing thing, thing, thing of, of the game. Yeah, you can win. You can be uh, regional or, or national or world champion. But the most important thing is the people you know and all the fun that you have and all the nice experiences, the parties, the the restaurant that you can go and all the fun that you have. I think that is the most important thing. And I'm very glad to be right now the Dakar World Champion. And I'm very glad to play against Isaac. Uh, I confirm that he's the best player, at least at this time, he's the best player of all time. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, no, he definitely, I would, I would, I would agree with you. I think he, I think he is, but there are so many great players uh, in the community and it's just, the community is such a great, great hero. The Heroclix community is just so great. Just like you were saying, Saul, so, uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Um, uh, it's been a really good time. I think we had a great conversation today and, uh, once again, congratulations on your win. We're already making some content on Facebook. We appear like Toxic Leaks, like this. Uh, Facebook Toxic Leaks, Instagram Toxic Leaks, dot MX, like Mexico, dot MX. 
And on YouTube, we will start next month to put some videos. We want to make a lot of collaboration. And we will be very glad if you came to our show. Don't worry that we're speaking in Spanish and English. We can make that relation for all the people. We'll make content in Spanish and in English because also Oscar and me and my brother speak in English or more or less bad English or we make our best efforts, but we'll be very glad to have uh, all the people come and make bigger this uh, nice community. Is that content on Instagram or? Instagram, like toxiclicks.mx. Mm -hmm. Facebook, toxic leaks like this. YouTube, toxic leaks like this. Okay, I'll check you out on YouTube and Facebook as well. I think I have you on Instagram already. So I will definitely remember to check you out. Um, viewers at home, please check uh, toxiclick.mx out on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And um, um, don't forget, everybody, wake up and smell the clicks. Good night. Good night.